Hello, and welcome to talk number three in understanding brew variables for creating your own brew recipes. Just remember this is a series of talks to help you create brews that you will enjoy. It's not a prescriptive way for you to create brews depending on how the roaster or some other person spit, spit, or some other person set up a recipe is to teach you to create your own recipes for your own coffee the way you like it. Today we're going to start with ratios and basically get started on dose. To cover dose is going to require a full talk because it is linked to dose yield and time. So let's start with ratio. As a concept, ratios is basically linking the amount of water in or liquid out, or water in dose or yield. That will vary depending on the type of brew that you are doing. Typically in espresso, we measure dose and yield. Thanks to a whole lot of research that was done by one of the people who you can read about or hear about at least in a video with James Hoffman, which I'll put a link to. James Hoffman also has a rant about ratios and how we shouldn't be using them anyway. However, I feel it's a good starting point to get to understand what's going on with your brew. So that's why I want to cover it. Each brew has its own particular ratio. Sometimes the ratio is expressed as dose versus yield, and sometimes it's expressed as dose and water in. For brews that you cannot measure the water out unless you drink some fancy manipulation, normally we measure water in rather than yield. A general rule of thumb for these ratios is the lower the ratio, the lower the extraction. Or, as we might link back to later, the lower extraction, the more likely it is that we're going to have the sourness in the coffee. Just remember, as I said, ratio is a guide, a starting point. Once again, you can watch this video by James Hoffman, who has a rant about ratios. Each brew type, as I said, will have its own particular default ratio. The ratios change a lot depending on coffee, the roast, the hot, uh, the water, etc, etc. So it's important for you to understand the concept, but not necessarily for you, important for you to use what people provide. It, it is useful having a ratio as a starting point. However, it's not something that you need to see as a something cast in stone. So let's go through the four types of brew types that, that I've broken the brews into. First one is pressure, which is normally linked to espresso or mocha pot. You could argue that AeroPress belongs here, but with maybe an adapter, that's true. But it's normally a pressure brew that's linked to producing a small out liquid. What's interesting for me is there has been a prevalence of the one to two in for espresso type brewing. Yes, there's been a link between these ratios to the type of coffee. So for example, a ristretto is a one to one, and espresso is a one to two, and lungo is a one to three or 1.4. But if you go to Italy, you will notice that the one to four is actually the standard for espresso. They use seven grams in and they produce 28 grams out or maybe 23. So it's between one to three and a half to four. And that is typically what most of the commercial retail espresso guys in Italy use. Finally, it's for a single espresso, and a lot of people don't like pulling single espressos, but they normally split their espressos because of the demand. So, what does that mean in grams? What basically means one gram of coffee equals one gram of liquid out, or yield, is for a one-to-one, -one, and one, or one gram of coffee is four grams of co uh, coffee out. So, we call this a yield because we are measuring the amount of water in the cup. For us to measure the amount of water that came into the coffee is quite difficult with espresso. While with other brews, it's almost impossible to do the other. Let's go over to boil or espresso or ibric. This is when you add coffee into a pot and you boil the pot. There are other methods that use the boiling method. In fact, a lot of the origin trips I've been to, this is exactly how they brew their coffee in a large kettle. 
and some parts of Norway also boil water, but it's linked this specifically to Ibrik or Turkish. There, the, the, the ratios vary from 1 to, 1 to 8 to 1 to 12. That normally means 1 gram of coffee is linked to 8 grams of coffee, or water in, sorry, water, or 1 grams of 12 grams out. Each person will have their particular preference, but what's important here is we're measuring water in and not actually yield. That link brings us over to the next two, which are linked because of the fact that their ratios are linked. Although you could argue that steep requires a higher ratio, a higher ratio than filter, or a higher dose than filter, depending on the filter type. So typically here we'll use a ratio of 1 to 15 or 1 to 17. What's interesting with these ratios is they're not 100% accurate because I, for example, a 1 to 16 is normally re represented as a 6 gram to 100 gram, but that isn't actually 100% right because it's around about 96 grams rather than 6. So here we tend to round up and it can be confusing using ratios here, but What's important is linking it to the grammage. So I concentrate on the grammage here. So six grams to 100 grams is no, normally common, but you go from eight grams to 100 grams or five grams to uh, 100 grams. Typically, I like to play between 5.5 grams to 100 grams to 6.5 grams to 100 grams. That gives me more or less the brew I'm looking for based on the water that I'm typically used to. The water in, as I've discussed, is what's measured here. So, how does this affect the taste? Let's go back to our reminders of ABCD. You need to remember that only you can taste the way you taste. So, as I said, the King Froggy is saying, only your taste is king. This stuff can be confusing, but just remember that only you can taste your, the coffee you like, the way you like it. So you need to apply, apply the ABCD rule, which we, which we went into details and talked to. But if the brew is acidic or sour-like, this is not bitter, this is sour-like, or is low sweetness, then the ratio is typically too low. If the brew is bitter, then the ratio could be high. So you're basically getting a lot of deteriorated um, flavors in the brew. If the brew is thin, then you must check your grind first rather than your ratio, because typically that means your grind is wrong. So let's go into some dose yield time basics to start off with. To design your brew, you first need to know the quantity of coffee to start with. That's basically the amount of coffee you want to add into your brew. And then from there, you can manipulate it. The next thing you want to do is link the amount of coffee in or sorry water in for for non-espresso not none for non-espresso or the amount of coffee that's going to be yielded in the cup this will depend on the brew as we've discussed so you it's something that you need to determine before for all brews you need to understand First, the vessel you're brewing in. For example, if you're brewing a vessel in a vessel that can only take a small amount of coffee or, or out liquid, then don't brew too much coffee. Or if you're using a vessel that needs more liquid, you need to link your dose to your, your vessel. This is one of the reasons why I think the prevalence of the one to two has become so popular because of the fact that the vessels are larger than we expect. The next thing is to know, understand the maximum dose of your particular machine and your equipment. You need to understand where your equipment's limits are. And once you understand those, you can then look at a, a maximum minimum dose and then from there build the range that you want and choose and then typically start in the middle to set your recipe. So let's talk a little bit about grind. And how it affects this. These pictures are courtesy of Baratza. We use, we sell their grinders, and they are very good grinders for domestic use, and we're very happy with them. So, what's important to, to comprehend is the finer the grind, the smaller the grind volume in grinds. So that means that the actual amount of space that the coffee takes up will be smaller than when it is coarse. 
So this is extremely important if you're going to visually look at how coffee is represented in your brewer or your porter filter or your filter or your Turkish pot. And that is important because you must not use your, you sh using a visual understanding is not really accurate. A lot of the older espresso methods used to do this north, south, west, east leveling off, looking at the porter filter basket and even saying that the ring around the porter filter basket was the level that you should be in. It actually is not linked to that at all. It's linked to the way the basket clips in to the porter filter. So there's a spring around the porter filter that allows the basket to clip in, and that is actually what that line is. You also get lines in products like the AeroPress and even some of the pour over products. Those lines are really indicative if you've got the grind exactly like the manufacturer decided, but it's important to understand that the size of the grind is actually not an indica is, is more of an indication than anything else. So you need to weigh your grinds. If your grinds are too fine, then what happens is the coffee, the coffee will choke or the water will actually not be able to travel through the coffee. This will mean that the coffee will be, will either drip very slowly or will be, or a resultant brew will be that it will be over extracted. If your coffee is too coarse, then what happens is the water finds a quick path through it or uh, and creates a channel. So it will find a, an easier path through the coffee and then it will not extract the coffee at all because it will actually avoid any of the other coffee, coffees in the bread. It's important that when you're setting your grinder that you know roughly what your times are that you're aiming for. So we, people talk about this 25 second or the, or the 20, 15 to, to the 20, 20 to 35 seconds in espresso or in your pour over brews, you know, between two and a half and four minutes. Those, those are what those are linked to. They're linked to making sure that your grind is linked, linked to the brew type. And going too quick or too slow will mean it's either too coarse or too fine. So let's talk about where we're going to start the next talk. I'm going to go into these per brew or per type of brew because that's basically where you need to start. So let's talk first about espresso. Espresso, it really does depend on your equipment. So some, most equipment comes with these uncalibrated baskets, which are pressed. A double basket is typically designed to take 14 grams. Most people nowadays are upgrading to the precision of the calibrated baskets, and then that calibrated basket will have a recommended dose. So if you've got an IMS or a VST, the IMS will typically be between 18 and 24, uh, while the VST is typically 17 grams. So you need to know what that is for your machine. Once again, the grind is important here. If you grind too fine for a particular dose, the, the, coffee, the, the coffee bed is going to be too far away from the shower screen, and this is going to cause a little bit of a muddy brew. If, if it's too coarse, it's going to press against the shower screen, and then you're not going to get enough uh, of a gap between the coffee and the, and the water, and that's going to end up being resulting in a really channel a very channelized brew and the coffee is going to be very thin for ibrik and turkish start with a ratio of one to one to ten so basically 12 grams in to 120 grams of of water in that's a pretty good way to start uh, if you're going to do a ibrik that's more or less where i start my ibriks when it comes to mocha pot here your water in is fixed most people don't measure it but there's normally a, an, a, an estimate of how much it's going to be in of course water doesn't change like grinds so it's going to be roughly specific to the pot that you have so you need to manipulate your dose here by manipulating your grind you must remember that that little basket that you have on top of the mocha pot is should be full to the so that it produces a nice coffee and that will only be determined by the grind so it will the grind will determine actually your dose so you might find that measuring the dose here is not really beneficial because you want to try and get a 
the, the basket full. However, do, measuring the dose does help you understand if it's too fine or too coarse and also know where, you, where you're going. Just, just a reminder, just like espresso machines, if it's too fine, it will choke and it'll, it'll mean that the valve itself will start spewing out the liquid. And if it's too coarse, the coffee will start tasting thin. You could apply this sort of philosophies as well to the to the AeroPress, but I'm not that I'm going to cut, that I'm going to link put under the filter or immersion brew. So what's important with the filter immersion brew is you need to start with a recommended with a, your recommendation by your manufacturer. Typically on the auto drip coffees you're looking at 5.5 to 100 grams, while on the steep or pour overs you look at 6 grams to 100 grams as a starting point. And that's sort of the beginning and the understanding of ratios. We're going to go into dose with a bit more detail in talk four. A lot of thank yous and um, to, to many people. A lot of the information I have here is uncredited because it's, I've gained it from reading or um, listening to people over the time. Barista Hustle haven't included much of their content here because they copyright everything. I quite like the whole lot of love guys and of course James Hoffman's video series. He's probably one of the better video series in the available on YouTube. Thank you very much for listening and hopefully we will have talk for soon. Bye bye.